What does a black person get in heaven? They get to be white. It sounds like a bad joke at a racist barbecue. But actually, these are the supposed words of Allah, the God of Islam, and I can prove it. Allah makes it clear that he's the father of no person, but he just may be the father of racism. Unlike Allah, I value you whatever your skin may look like. So let's waste no time and jump right in. In Surah 3 of the Quran, Allah's perfect word, we read, On the day some faces will turn white and some faces will turn black. As for those whose faces turn black, to them it will be said, did you disbelieve after your belief? Then taste the punishment for which you used to reject. But as for those whose faces will turn white, they will be within the mercy of Allah. They will abide therein eternally. At first glance, we might be tempted to read this metaphorically. Fortunately, Yasser Qadi informs us that no Arabic speaker would ever take it literally. The translation she sends to me, uh, which is the Islamophobes are quoting to her online, that why does the Quran say uh, that on that day some faces will be white and some faces will be black? What a great, egregious uh, translation error, mistranslation that might even be intentional. This is not how the verse should be translated. Tabiyaddu and taswaddu or muswadda are linguistic forms that have nothing to do with the color of one's skin. And hence, any person who understands Arabic would never associate these verbs with human skin color. These Quranic verbs and nouns are in fact associated with the brightness of the day. And the brightness of the day is associated with optimism. The meaning is that the faces will be optimistic. The faces will be, in English we can say, beaming with joy. That's how it should be translated. Nothing to do with whiteness whatsoever. The noun here has to do with beaming with joy. And then the opposite, taswaddu, they're going to be uh, uh, gloomy with fear, with trepidation. That's what taswaddu uh, means, has nothing to do again with the color of one's skin. Unfortunately, Muslim apologists love to lie, and Yasser Fradi, I mean Qadi, is no exception, changing a story based on what the audience wants to hear. Additionally, claiming Saudi backed Sahih International is a gross mistranslation and Islamophobic doesn't exactly pass the sniff test. So let's go ahead and see what actual Arabic speakers say about the verse. Let's start with al Qurtubi, widely regarded as one of the greatest Quran interpreters in history. In his tafsir on 3106, he states the faces will be, quote, as white as snow, or in Qadi's theory, as optimistic as snow. Is snow known for its color or for its optimism? I don't hold a PhD from Yale, but even I know the answer's obvious. I guess this highly regarded tafsir must also be a gross misunderstanding due to Kurtubi's poor knowledge of Arabic because God, he says so. This person uh, either has an evil intent or uh, most likely has no clue what the Arabic actually says. But surely some Muslims must have understood Arabic. Well, apparently not. Christian Lang surveyed the early Muslim exegetes and found no significant disagreement. They all thought the verse should be read literally. That's so weird. Fakhr al-Din al-Razi, author of the most extensive tafsir then known, explains it well. There is nothing to indicate that one should abandon the literal meaning. And he argued that the black or white faces serve an important purpose. They help people find the right group on the Day of Judgment. Any person who understands Arabic would never associate these verbs with human skin color. Abu al-Musafir al-Samani, writing a hundred years earlier, likewise says that colored faces reveal the secret things. And anybody who really understands Arabic will understand this. Going back even further, the Sufi saint Sari al-Sakati, living around 200 years after Muhammad, was known to say, I look at my nose twice every day because I am afraid that my face may have turned black. Nothing to do with uh, skin colors. 
I guess he was really just checking whether his nose was gloomy. And that's another gross mistranslation. Ibn al-Jazri, one of the most important jurists in Islamic history, told a story of a handsome man named Habib who had a black spot suddenly appear on his face. That have nothing to do with the color of one's skin. Habib explains what happened. I saw a young beardless lad wearing a light gilala cloth under which his body was distinguishable. I looked at him. When I came to my lord, he said to me, Habib. I said, Here I am. He said, Pass over the fire. So I passed over the fire, and it blew this gust on me. I cried, Help! He called to me, a gust for a glance. That was just a tale from a dream, however. Others were not so fortunate. Said ibn al-Musayyab, one of the seven jurists of Medina, is believed to have ruled against an accused based on his appearance, remarking, Since he is a liar, Allah blackened his face. It has nothing to do again with the color of one's skin. Indeed, al-Musayyab's belief was widespread leading to the following proverb. All those with a blackened face claim to be blacksmiths. Are blacksmiths known for their gloomy faces? They're going to be uh, uh, gloomy with fear. Or are they perhaps known for being covered in black soot? Nothing to do with uh, skin colors. Only Islamophobe would know, I suppose. Some Islamophobes have brought in Quran translations. And the list goes on. But I think that's enough to prove that Qadi has once again earned his fraudy epithet. That's so weird, a'udhu billah. And that Arabic speakers do indeed take Surah 3, 106 as referring to skin color. So, what does the black Muslim have to look forward to in Jannah? Fortunately, the extremely popular Epistle of Forgiveness paints the picture for us. In this imaginative tale of paradise, a sheikh encounters a girl who reveals her former identity. Perplexed, the sheikh remarks, There is no God but God! You were black, and now you're more dazzling white than camphor, or camphir if you like! The girl explains that there is no reason to be surprised, as even the poets know. One mustard seed of light from him, with all black people mixed, would whiten all the blacks. Congratulations, my African friends! Allah will make you even whiter than me! Are you just so excited? Now, to be fair, this doesn't necessarily have to be taken as racist. As one modern Muslim trying to explain the verse remarks, maybe us white people are just better looking, and Allah wants everyone to look as beautiful as possible. It is clear that certain races might be better looking than others, the same way some white people are more better looking than other white people. Therefore, it is completely reasonable to believe that all humans who go to heaven will turn white, and not only that, but will enter paradise in the most beautiful state. If you think that's a load of crap for more reasons than one, well, so do I. But let's say Surah 3, 106 and related verses aren't actually racist. And we just fail to understand the wisdom of Allah. Even then, we still have a problem. There is no question that such verses have been used to justify racism in Islam. But this is supposed to be the literal, perfect speech of an all-knowing, all-powerful God if Allah wants people to be easily identifiable on Judgment Day, as Al-Razi asserts, why not pick green and purple as the distinguishing mark, or choose some other sign, rather than pick the two main colors associated with skin tone? And if Allah just wants to compare joyful faces with gloomy ones, like Yasser Fradi asserts, why doesn't he use those exact words? Either this is a god who's not very smart, let alone all-knowing, or this is a god who has no problem with people accidentally taking his words as racist. So, take your pick. But either way, that's not a god I want to follow. And here's the thing. This is hardly the only example of Allah, that is Muhammad, exhibiting racist thoughts. Check out this video for dozens more examples.